there's something maybe going on here. And it was so obvious. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Kristen and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a wrap up for the month of April. This is coming out super late this month. I'm not really sure why, so I apologize, but here we are. Moving forward, I would really like to start all of my videos with what I am currently reading, and that is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Kerr. This is an adult fantasy featuring a con artist who is trying to worm her way into high society to make her fortune in sort of a Venetian-inspired city-state. I am only 15% in so far, but I am really liking it. So in the month of April, I read nine books, or I finished nine books. There were a couple other books that I sort of puttered away at, but didn't quite finish for one reason or another. I did do a lot of reading vlogs at the beginning of April, so a lot of the books that I read towards the beginning of the month I have already talked about um, in pretty great detail. So one of the first books, I honestly don't remember the, um, the order, but one of the first books that I read this month was Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. This is a sci-fi romance featuring a male-male relationship and it is a political marriage. I would say this was pretty light or like intro as a sci-fi book and also probably light and intro as a romance book. So if either of those readers, if you're a sci-fi reader that wants to read more romance or a romance reader that wants to read more sci-fi, this is actually probably a perfect book for you. It doesn't get super detailed into the technology or the science. It was definitely a romance, but it was a little bit light. It was not steamy. It had only fade to black scenes. One thing that I really thought was well done in this book was the relationship and the way that it explored how your past experiences in relationships leave sort of scars or traces that, that you then take forward with you into a new relationship and can affect how that relationship goes. There is a little bit of a murder mystery to this book and that's one thing where I feel like it maybe wasn't super successful, just that there was a lot of political components to the murder mystery and I don't feel like we were really given all of the world building or information that we needed to make some of those shocking moments really hit home. I listened to the audiobook of this on Scribd and I think that the narrator did such an amazing job, particularly with the way that he voiced Prince Kiem's character I think made me absolutely fall in love with that character. One of the next books that I read in April was Flamefall by Rosaria Munda. This is the second book in the Aurelian cycle. The first book is Fireborn, and this is a young adult fantasy series featuring dragon riders. This is a very political young adult fantasy. I can't say too much about what's happening in Flamefall because it is the second book in a series, but I absolutely love this book, even though it was kind of painful and heartbreaking for a lot of it. The two main characters, Annie and Lee, have extremely traumatic and difficult pasts, and they have a very complicated relationship dynamic, which was kind of further strained in this second book. There were other kind of external pressures happening that were continuing to put a strain on the two of them and their relationship as friends and potentially more. One thing that this book does really well is show and dive deep into how governments work and run and the very difficult and complicated decisions that people in power have to make and how they have to balance that decision making process sometimes against their own personal beliefs and values. This takes place about 10 years after a revolution and it is really showing how this new government is trying to be better than what was before it, but is maybe not absolutely succeeding. And it is highlighting the areas in which it is now failing. Another book that I read at the beginning of April is Ray Bear by Jordan A. Fueco. I also think that I got a copy of this from the library using the Overdrive app and I did talk about it in a reading blog. This is an African-inspired young adult fantasy where the main character is sort of magically bound to fulfill one of her mother's wishes, and that is to kill the crown prince, or a ray bear. In order to get access to the crown prince, the daughter is put in a situation of sort of auditioning to become one of his future councilmen. 
So this group of counselors with the prince are all together sort of from a young uh, age and grow up together and they are kind of magically bound together to the extent that they have to physically spend time with each other otherwise they get sick. This had really strong found family vibes but it was really more than that. It got into a lot of conversations about uniformity and diversity. It also had a very strong feminist vibe towards the latter half of the book. I did really like Ray Bear and I am excited for the next book. I think it is called Redemptor. Next, I read two contemporary romance books, the first of which was Beach Read by Emily Henry. I absolutely loved this book, but it was not at all what I was expecting when I picked it up. It had some very heavy emotional moments. This is a single POV romance following the main character, January, who is a romance writer who is struggling with writer's block because she has stopped believing in love and happily ever afters. Struggling to meet a deadline, she moves into a cabin right next door to Gus, who writes literary fiction and who is also struggling with writer's block. The two challenge each other to write a novel in the other's genre. On the surface, it sounds like a really cute fluffy romance, and that is not really the case. Don't get me wrong, this book had great sexual tension, satisfyingly steamy moments, and the characters had tons of chemistry and probably some of the best fun and witty banter that I have read in a really long time. But both characters are also dealing with a lot in their lives. And we do a pretty deep dive into topics such as grief, adultery, child abuse, and mental health and family secrets. One thing that surprised me that I really liked was that the main characters are actually really close to myself in age and born around the exact same time, so a lot of our references were very similar. There are a decent amount of cultural references in this book, and usually I find that those take me out of reading, and it's, in fact it's why I have stayed away from a lot of contemporary books in the past. But in this one, they actually made me connect with the characters a lot more. It made them feel like very real people and it made the book and the situation seem very real. The other contemporary romance that I read definitely was a light, simple, fluffy, easy romance, and that was The Best Friend Problem by Mariah Ankenman. The character Prudence is in the process of fertility treatments in order to become a single mom using a sperm donor, but a spontaneous night of passion with her sexy fireman fighter best friend Finn throws a bit of a wrench in that plan when she gets pregnant with Finn's baby instead. There's just one problem. Her best friend has never really wanted kids. So you can pretty much guess where that book is going. <laughs> it was fine. Then I read A Strange Hymn by Laura Thalassa. This is a fantasy romance book and it is the second book in the Bargainer series. I actually found this one to be kind of disappointing. Like the steam was really good. The romance was still like pretty solid. I've, I feel rather invested in the relationship. But the plot itself was very obvious and uh, there was a little bit of a mystery component and despite the fact that the main character Callie is a private investigator she would be like hmm there's something maybe going on here and it was so obvious so obvious that I found it really frustrating and I was sort of like yelling out loud at the book for a lot of it. <laughs> Despite that, I then picked up The Emperor of Evening Stars by Laura Thalassa, which is sort of book 2.5. There is a storyline that happens at the very end of the second book that has to do with the bargainer, so the love interest, Desmond's uh, past. And so before moving on with that story in book three, the author wrote a companion novel which is from Desmond's perspective and it goes way back in time to explain his past and history. And the second half of the book is the interactions from the first novel and some scenes from the second 
but from Desmond's perspective. I have to admit, I am kind of a sucker for the male perspective companion novel. It made me appreciate what had happened between them so much more because there was a lot more involved from his perspective that we only got in like a confession scene and this went into the details and actually had some pretty intense moments, I thought, even though the book was sort of like nothing on its own. I did pick up the next book, I don't even remember what it was called, I just wasn't really getting into it, so I will probably finish this series at a later date, uh, but not, not feeling the pressure to, to pick up the next one anytime soon. And then to finish off the month, the next two fantasy romance books were both kind of meh. And I think that's maybe why I put off to filming this wrap up for so long is because while the first half of the month was pretty good, the second half of the month kind of wasn't. A Court of Silver Flames is the fourth book in the Akatar series, not including the bridge novella that is between the third book and this book. This book, of course, switches protagonists from the main character in the first three, Feyre, to her sister, Nesta, and we also get the perspective of her love interest, Cassian. This is not a plot book. It is a character book, focusing on Nesta's journey, overcoming and working through not only the traumatic events that she has experienced in her past, but also her relationship with anger, her relationship with her sisters, fear of failure, and both the internal and perceived external expectations of her. I invited my friend Taylor, who also read this book, over and we sat down to film a non-spoilery review, which you can check out, and also a very spoilery, very X-rated <laughs> uh, discussion about the book and our predictions for where the series is going, so you can check those out. It was a really great character dive into a rather unlikable character and putting in personal work to deal with your stuff. And I did finish it with a much better understanding and appreciation for Nesta as a character, but it just kind of left me with like, that was fine, feelings. <laughs> One of the books that I sort of did not fully read but was like puttering away at was actually A Court of Mist and Fury. I thought that there were really similar beats in A Court of Silver Flames as there were to A Court of Mist and Fury, book two in this series, and it's a really great book. <laughs> and so I went back and read a significant portion of it, probably a t about 60%. And then around the same time that I was reading A Court of Silver Flames, I also was reading The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third book in the Mistborn series. However, I started this book when there were only three days left on my library reservation, and I did not finish it in time. <laughs> However, I just discovered that our physical libraries are open again here, so I just reserved a copy. And then finally, the last fantasy romance that was also sort of disappointing was The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the third book in the Blood and Ash series. She kind of lost me on this one. I found the first two books in this series rather enjoyable, like really fun, kind of bingeable fantasy romance books, and this one was not that. It's kind of like when in TV shows, the two love interests finally get together and all of the sexual tension is suddenly gone, even though you like really, really wanted those people to be together. It was kind of like that. And this book did pick up immediately after the end of the third book. So the first few chapters were very dramatic, really high action, high stakes, but also with a lot of new information being piled on. And then the middle 80% of the book really slowed down. They would be speculating about certain possibilities related to all of that new information, and then they would have a different discussion where they would actually get the answers to those possibilities, or at least more information, and then afterwards they would go back and discuss what they had just learned. So you basically had the same conversation over and over again with slightly new information or their thoughts and feelings on that new information every single time. But then, in the end, she ramped up the action and drama and surprising absolutely no one, 
ended this book with, if not a cliffhanger, a very dramatic ending to make sure that you come back for that next book. I will, but I will do it grudgingly. <laughs> anyway, that is it for me today. Let me know down below what you thought of any of these books if you read them and what your favorite book from the month of April was. Mine was definitely Flamefall. Beach Read would be a close second though. Thanks for watching today, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get notifications for when I post new videos. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.